I call it this way because the disruptive technologies that created the new markets in travel or taxi or hotel business, these same technologies give citizens a big, much bigger say and uh, influence on political debate and politicians themselves. So we now have a public grandstand that is permanent on and permanent knows what's going on and what they want to comment on or what politicians they like or dislike and what messages they want to address. And on the other hand, politicians themselves can use this direct channel to promote themselves, to promote their messages, to show themselves in the right way that they want to show them. And uh, so it together is disrupting democracy that it used to be that you watch Congress or Parliament and knows what's going on and probably increasingly you know what your colleagues think of it or what your neighbors think of it and you can exchange that and you can have a kind of public opinion themselves without mediators like journalists or experts or professors you can directly communicate what the public opinion is about politics, about parliament, about agendas, etc. Now, people ask me what do I see that uh, uh, proves my point and uh, it's a kind of signs on the wall you can see when you look at politics and democracy. Uh, and the main signs are that we see all kinds of runner-ups winning elections. So people from outside political parties start either new political parties and then win elections or put pressure on current political parties to candidate them. So we see the runner-ups coming in and they increasingly come in because we have this new direct channel that the citizens also follow. The second sign on the wall is that we increasingly see that in the, in the parliaments and congress themselves politicians want to make uh, rumor or want to expose uh, threatening things or want to uh, be followed. So the, the second element that you can see is that there is a scarcity of attention and you need to be as a politician a kind of actor, a kind of a theatrical a personality that shows uh, that he is working with the people. Yeah, the, the main uh, uh, thing you can see why there is a disruption of democracy going on is that the old comments of the old people that were commentators, the old political junkies that knew everything of conference and congress and parliament and politicians, that they are increasingly wrong. So they, they see something happening in parliament and in politics that they don't understand but they keep on giving their own opinion as they used to. So they call it theat theatrical and drama and they don't know that behind it politicians have to fight for attention. So it's not only theater they are playing, they, their, their theater is necessary to communicate with the people. The second element is that they don't see that there is a much more uh, focus on everyday politics within the politicians because they have to communicate what their result is, what they have accomplished, uh, what they have promised in election and are uh, getting now. So you don't, uh, you don't see a politician going on steady uh, for a year about the same issue. It's currently daily business. So uh, the main thing to look at uh, what is going on in democracy is to listen carefully to the old commentators who don't know what's going on. One of the main things we see in disruption of democracy is that the runner-ups who win elections are coming from outside political parties or put a lot of pressure on current political parties because they have a popular vote or, and are popular on the direct uh, channel towards the citizens. We saw it with Macron in uh, France who erected his own political party five months before the elections and then won. 
So he came really from outside the political party system. We saw it with Zelensky in the Ukraine, who also originated his own political party. We saw it with the Five Star Movement in Italy, who was also a new party coming from outside current political parties. And the second strategy of putting pressure on uh, incumbent political parties by some candidate who has a lot of popular vote behind him, as we saw with Trump. Trump became bigger on social media and then in newspapers before the Republican Party him even wanted to candidate him for the presidency. So he put pressure on them and saying, look at my followers, look who's already following me on Twitter, etc. So you have to put me on candidacy. Yeah, the, 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 the other element you see in disruption of democracy, as, as we saw with disruption in the market, we saw current, suddenly new entrants in markets totally from outside the current business thanks to the new technology. So we saw it in taxi with Uber, we saw it in hotel business with Airbnb, we saw a, 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 a runner-ups from outside the current market and because the new platforms and the new technology gave them access to consumers. So uh, we see the same thing in politics, that the runner-ups are winning because they have a better knowledge and use of the platform technology. So they have a, a, a big exposure on social media or are very important in YouTube channels or, uh, or everywhere on Instagram and have a lot of followers who want to know what they are doing and what they are saying and what their comments are. So we increasingly see the same phenomenon as in the markets that the runner-ups are winning. Uh, we saw in Holland, uh, we had recently an election about the provincial uh, government, but it was also about the Senate we have in Parliament. And the big winner of that election was uh, Baudet, who started his own party a year before the election. And he was very well, more than the, his competitors, uh, exposed on social media, on uh, YouTube channels. Uh, he even left Parliament uh, to show himself on social media. And then you know how the new technology is working and that you need to address the citizens directly on the new channel. One of the backgrounds of the disruption of democracy is that our media landscape has totally changed. There is a new direct channel increasingly uh, towards the citizens that reaches the citizens, but also citizens themselves can produce on that channel. So their movies, their videos, their pictures, their knowledge, their, their holiday resorts, every, their family members, their parties, Everything is on this new direct channel. There is no longer someone between you and the media, like a journalist or an expert or a professor, who tells to the people what you are saying. You can currently increasingly show it yourself and show yourself and your family and your neighborhood and the things you think are important to show. So uh, increasingly we have this new direct channel which changes totally the media landscape because now the old traditional media like t television and newspapers have a direct competition of this direct channel. And so the new uh, element in all media strategies is about attention that people can look at all kinds of screens and all kinds of data and all kinds of pictures and movies and, and events in abroad or in the neighborhood or in the family. So they, they are no longer glued towards the television set or towards the uh, newspapers that arrive every morning. They can look at everything all day long and can select what they want to look at. So the new basic strategic element in all media is about attention. And uh, that makes it very hard for people who were used to have attention, like politicians, like executives, like mayors. 
they now have to get used to a landscape in which nobody is even looking at them. Examples of direct democracy are on the one side, on the citizen side, that the citizens themselves learn to use platforms to acknowledge public issues or social issues, like in neighborhood apps, that they increasingly uh, tell them that people are vulnerable or on the street or should be socially addressed. So they learn to do more with these apps and these platforms. And I see the same thing going on uh, in the, on the, the representative democracy side, that they learn how to communicate with their citizens about public issues and no longer wait just for voting once in four years, but every week or every month address them directly. My main answer uh, in this new strategic context of disruption of democracy and disruptive technologies and giving citizens more power is about we need another leadership. The future of leadership, in my view, is on civil leadership. And civil leadership is about informal people uh, addressing citizens and showing their worry and their plans around public issues like environment or energy or healthcare or education. And they increasingly, as civil leader, you show that you know what's going on around the citizens, what they want, what they are afraid of, what they are worried about. And this same attitude of civil leadership is necessary for all people who want to address citizens in a public issues. So it's, it's civil leadership is necessary for politicians, for CEOs, for uh, uh, directors of public service organizations. Everybody in this new public arena should be like a civil leader. And it's my main elements of this civil leadership is about attitude, that you need to have an attitude of one of us citizens, of purpose, that you go for the public passion, and that you have rhetorical skills that you can address it to the people who really know what's going on and can exchange all their comments, and uh, you ad address them and take them with you. The reason I write these books and lecture a lot about them, increasingly internationally, is because a think tank has the uh, nice, unique position that they have no vested interest. They are not lobbying for some interest or for some politician or for some government. They, ha they are independently, like Public Space Foundation, and in their independence, they, they focus on things that are publicly interesting. In my uh, mission of the Public Space Foundation, we say it's about promoting active citizenship and social entrepreneurship. And the reason I wrote this book is that increasingly the new technology helps me in this mission enormously. That because this new technology gives citizens much more data power, opinion power, uh, uh, organization power. Increasingly, all people are addressing more uh, and talking more about active citizenship and social entrepreneurship. And I will talk with you in the next vlog about Public Space Foundation, why I founded it and what it does.